I just started this project like 10 minutes ago, so there's not really anything in here to show you. But sometimes when I start a project, one thing, so I'll, I'll create this cube for scale, right? One thing that helps me is to use like a piece of furniture or something uh, that's a bit more concrete than a cube. Most people like to bring in avatars or something, but I like to use furniture for scale. So one of the first things I'll do when building a world is I'll build a piece of furniture out that I'm going to use in that world. And I will use that to scale like the room around and stuff. It just gives me a better idea for what the room is going to be. So I'm going to build this couch. Um, let's see, can I turn on screencast? So that way you can follow along. This I'm going to, this is like kind of like a tutorial, but also it's not going to be very beginner friendly. I'm kind of just going to model and build it and then I'm going to texture it. So if you're not really that familiar with like Blender, or UV editing, or like Substance Painter, which is what I'm going to use to texture this, uh, you may have trouble following along, but regardless, let's go ahead and begin to build this couch. I found a couch that I like, and I took a bunch of screenshots, and I'm going to use it as references. I'm mainly just going to be using these two photos down here. Um, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to bring in an empty just to have... Uh, as my center point because I'm going to mirror between this and I'm going to start with like uh, this outside part here like the arm here and so let's move my anchor there bring in a plane I'm going to use the solidify modifier even thickness and I'm just going to try to match it up with the the length uh, or the width of the arm here and I'm not gonna go this way if you look here you can see there's like a bit of a uh, like a crease here I'm gonna actually build that part out separately I want to use this as a reference so uh, this is this image is not to scale with the other image let's see can I eyeball this that's pretty close I think all of this I'm just gonna hide because I don't need any of it there's not really anything in this project anyways. All right. Cool. Now I need a mirror modifier. Let's bring it and mirror it on uh, the empty that I brought in. I'm going to do clipping. And I feel like that I had clicked it, it ended up mirroring on the image, which is not what I wanted. There we go. So that's basically just the back part here. It wraps around. Now I'm gonna move my cursor, bring in a new cube, scale this down, and then I'm going to add another mirror modifier for this. Mirror it on the empty. I'm using an empty to mirror just because when I bring in separate objects here or like all these different objects, I can uh, make sure that I'm mirroring on the same point. Let's make sure clipping is selected. Join those together. And now I just need to scale this to match uh, the shape that's right here. That is the bottom of this sofa. Let's bring this up. Bring this down. And now let's fit it in to match the other mesh that we have. Now I'm gonna try to get this as close as I can when I, I think I'm probably gonna be using um, cloth physics on all these meshes. Maybe not this, I might sculpt this. But yeah, so as I go about uh, modeling this couch I'm going to be adding a lot of vertices and that is because this couch isn't actually like this mesh that I'm working on right now is not going to be the final mesh that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be creating a high poly version and then uh, from that high poly version I'll make a low poly version and then in substance I'll bake the normal detail from the high poly version onto the low poly version. So I'm not really going to be worried about the amount of triangles or faces that I'm creating. Before I start adding vertices and start doing cloth stuff, I'm going to bring in, I'm going to try to model out the little like metal cage here that is surrounding this. And I'm just going to build it over here to begin with. And if I look, uh, I need... I need an image. So looking at this 
this metal piece, you can see that it like separates between this horizontal piece and this vertical piece. So when I model this, I'm going to make sure that I have a edge here to use as my crease or to use as my seam. That's what I meant to say. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Bring this over. And I just selected both those edges and I scaled, press Y and press 0 to make sure that those line up perfectly. Uh, that looks good. I'm going to bring that over here. I'm going to add the solidify modifier, make sure even thickness is on. And I'm actually going to switch the normal so it's going the other way. And let's bring that all the way up to the couch. And now I'm going to select, I'm going to be using this picture here uh, to try to get this right or right, let's add the mirror so that should be on the same spot of the couch on that side as it is on this side uh, I'm gonna look on the website that I got this reference from to see if I have a straight on back image which I don't think they do no that's okay do I have both those edges selected I don't oh wait no I do Okay, so I'm pressing E to extrude, bring it, let's bring this all the way over here. Let's make sure clipping is on. So it stops. I'm gonna So I put a loop cut on both of those. I'm gonna select both those edges and use this offset edge loop cut tool, and then I'm gonna kind of just drag this out. Oops, press W to go back to my cursor select. I'm gonna select these two edges, dissolve those. Uh, go to face select mode. I'm going to select both these faces, scale in the x direction, and try to make these like squares. And that looks good to me. And then I'm going to select both these edges, the bottom and the top here and the bottom there. Press F to join that, and that did not work for some reason. Just did forward slash to isolate this object, which is super useful. Um, that's because I didn't have that selected. There we go. And now I, I'm going to move it over to try to match it to where it is on there. I think it's like more like this. That seems right to me. So I still need to, I still need to model out this piece here. Um, I'm just going to, it's going to be separate. Well, actually I'll do it. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to select these faces. Do shift D to duplicate X to the X axis. And I'm going to press P to separate the selection. And as a separate object, I'm just going to bring this, get rid of the mirror. I'm going to bring this to the center. So that way, like, the thickness of this matches with that. Um, but because it's in a different spot, I don't really need it to be joined right there. Also, I'm not too worried with how this connects back here because players aren't going to really see that and also even if they could it probably look will look fine um, and so that's basically the outer part of it and now I just need to do the cushions uh, actually before I do the cushions let's let's actually finish modeling this so I'm going to I'm going to add a bunch of loop cuts I'm going to do enough of them so that this is separated by as close to equally um, like as close to being squares as possible that way when I do my cloth simulations it, it um, that won't get any like weird distortion I feel like when you do rectangles you have like different weird shapes uh, it can expand in weird ways especially when you're doing like pressure with cloth physics so I like to make sure that th they are all like cubes as much as possible and then I'm going to be I'll end up adding subdivide on here in a moment but before we do that I want to go to select, um, select sharp edges, press U, mark seams, and then I'm just going to apply this because I, I don't think we need it. So I applied that modifier because I want to UV unwrap this uh, mesh here before I start adding all the cloth physics. Um, and that way we'll have a cleaner unwrap when it actually comes time to texturing. So I'm just going to uh, press U, unwrap, and let's, oh, it is separated. Cool. So now that looks good. 
and that's all we need it to be. Now let's go ahead. Uh, I'm actually just going to add another layer of subdivision before I add this subdivide surface. Oh, I may want another one actually. There we go. Like I said, this mesh is going to get cut down quite a bit from all these vertices. It's not going to be so heavy. I'm going to start doing uh, cloth simulation stuff. This is going to be really subtle because this is like there's not a lot going on here. I just kind of want to like puff this out a little bit. So I'm in the layout tab, which is where I have my timeline here. I'm going to go he here. What, it, what is this called? Physics properties, cloth. And then I'm actually going to do cotton should be fine. Um, there's probably way too many subdivisions here if that's already lagging with so this is like 60k that's quite a bit <laughs> uh, okay let's go back to the physics tab um field weights i'm going to take the gravity all the way down this is still too many we'll just do one gravity is all the way down and then we're going to go to pressure i'm just going to do like one let's see what happens And that's good. That's all I want. I just wanted to inflate it just a little bit. Uh, well, actually, maybe we'll do a little bit more. Actually, let's go back here. Let's make the in the pressure a bit lower. Oops. And that looks good. So super subtle. Let's see how many. That's a lot of faces. But that's okay. We will deal with that in a little bit. Now let's basically do the same thing here. Though I'm probably going to use the sculpt tool because if you look, it's kind of hard to see because the image is like super blurry, but if you look, there is like seams kind of on the right here. And I'm going to try to recreate that. So um, let's apply the solidify modifier. Before I apply the mirror modifier, I'm going to try to break this up. I'm going to try to make these squares again. Uh, those look like squares. It kind of gets ruined back here, but that's okay. And that kind of looks like squares. So that should work. Let's do... Let's select everything. Three, subdivide. Uh, F3 subdivide worked because I had pressed F3 and then I searched subdivide. Uh, that should be good. Um, I'm wondering, should I add the loop cuts for the seams and use those, or should I just do it on the edge? I'll just do it on the edge. So, just like I did with uh, this mesh here, I'm selecting all the sharp edges to. And, and I'm selecting that to mark my seams because I want the seams to be, uh, or I want this UV'd out before I do my physics stuff. So let's go to UV editing, and make sure that it UV'd properly and it did, it looks good. Um, and now I'm going to apply the mirror. Or I, have to, I have to unwrap without the mirror so I have everything. So let's double check that again, looks good. And let's go ahead and add subdivide. Uh, maybe I should subdivide again first. F3, subdivide. And then add that. I think that looks a bit better. Uh, one should be enough, I think. Because that's, that's quite a bit. I went back to the layout tab, but I don't know if that's necessary. I'm going to go to sculpt. I'm going to be using... Uh, what, what is this called? The cloth filter, which is all the way down here. Um, I think these tools are in the newer versions of Blender, so if you don't have that, it's probably because you're on an older version of Blender. Uh, though it's been around for a, like over a year now, I think, or quite some time, so, but just in case if you don't have it, just update to the newest Blender. I'm going to go to face sets, and I'm going to initialize face sets by UV seams, and that's going to do that. And then... Um, to begin with, first thing I'm going to do 
is not not sculpt actually. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to object mode. Make sure my timeline's at zero. I'm going to hit cloth, go down to, I'm in the physics tab, bring gravity. And I'm going to do basically what I did for this mesh. I'm going to do the same thing for this. Ooh. Why is this looking weird? It's looking weird because there is a, a bunch of faces here. That should look better. Cool. Uh, bring, bring down the gravity, low pressure. Let's see what happens when I play this. Uh, it inflates it a little bit, which is exactly what I wanted. Cool. Apply both of those. We have a ton of faces on here, but we will deal with that later. Um, now let's go to sculpt mode. Going down to uh, the cloth filter. Now let's go over here. If you don't have these options here, you can get it by pressing the N. And let's go to tool and I'm going to check use face sets. So now when I use the sculpt, it will separate it by the, the face sets here. I need to change my filter type from gravity to inflate. And now I can f inflate this by the face sets. And this is going to just make these seams a bit more prominent. It looks like it made this all one face set. So let's go back to face sets, initialize by UV seams. That's much better. I don't know why it did that. And this is not mirroring anymore, so let's make sure we get this side as well. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, I'm actually, it looks good. Now we need to sculpt this a bit so that this little metal cage or the metal stand for this couch is still visible. So I'm going to go back to sculpt. I'm going to go up here and use the uh, draw sharp. And then I'm going to go over to my tool settings, go to stroke. I'm going to change this to line. And then I'm going to make my radius bigger. Oops. Maybe even bigger than that. Nice. That is quite intense. So I'm actually, before I do that, I'm gonna, is this still mirroring? I think it is. I'm just gonna select this whole side, bring it out just a little bit. I'm just looking to see how it looks on that side too. All right, now let's go back to sculpt and uh, we're gonna bring the radius down, bring the strength down for sure. And this is just gonna help it look like this metal piece is pushing up against uh, the the sofa and the line using the line stroke allows you to get like an even stroke all the way across this which is what we want I'm just gonna do this a couple times that's my strength my I brought the strength down quite a bit so in some parts it might take a little bit more go back to object mode I'm gonna select this metal piece and then this back part press forward slash on the numpad to isolate this and then let's select this again go back to sculpt now I can just go in here and add my strokes. And that looks pretty good. Cool. Let's go back to object mode. Uh, let's bring everything back. Cool. So those two things are, or all these meshes are basically done. I'm going to add a bevel modifier on this to see what that looks like. I feel like sometimes the bevel modifier just doesn't work right, but that is looking good, so we'll keep that. I'm gonna go ahead and UV this out. Because after I apply this a lot, the solidify modifier, I feel like it's gonna be a bit more difficult. And I'm gonna unwrap it as well. Let's see how that looks. Looks good, all right. Hopefully that makes it a bit easier for us down the line. Um, okay, so now we need to work on the cushions. So I'm just gonna bring in a cube. I'm gonna try to scale this properly and it's very difficult to see. 
so I'm gonna hide that. So that looks pretty close when looking at the reference and just to make sure that it is right, I'm gonna add the array modifier, do three of these and make sure it lines up well up against the back part of this couch and it looks almost right. We'll model one of them and then when after we duplicate the the first one of these, we'll like change up how it how it looks so they're not like just duplicates. But we're going to be modeling this almost the same as how we modeled uh, this back part. First we're going to be subdividing it quite a bit and then we'll inflate it using the cloths physics simulation and then we'll probably sculpt it a bit and try to get as ni as many nice creases or, or like folds in there as we can. So let's let's do that first. Let's add some edge loops to make these squares. That looks good. I'm gonna subdivide this and then add the subdivide surface. I'm gonna use simple for this and let's go let's go back to the layout. Uh, make sure my timeline is at zero. Let's go to physics, cloth, turn the gravity all the way down, pressure, two. Um, let's make sure this is on cotton, and I'm going to increase the bending here, and that's going to help the mesh keep its shape a bit more. Uh, let's see if I add even more faces. Let's see how that looks. That's looking better. Maybe I should bring the bending down. I do want a bit more curve on the sides here. So let's go, let's put that back to 0.5. I, did, I haven't UV'd this out yet. So the thing is, is I was looking at like where this seam is and I'm wondering if I should add another loop cut and mark those as the seams. And then I'll mark these back ones. This may, I may have to undo this, oops. Uh, there we go. So let's unwrap that. That looks good. Let's go back to layout. See now, because I added that, it's it's adding a bunch of weird faces there, and it's looking kind of odd to me. Let's bring this down a little bit. Uh, let's go back to the physics tab. Let's go down to pressure. Let's bring this down to like one. Let's see what happens. All right, we're gonna undo what I just did. Let's select everything, clear seams, and then let's get rid of these edge loops that I added. Let's go to select, um, select sharp edges, U, mark seams, A, control, all, unwrap. That should unwrap it right properly, and it does. Let's go back to layout, and then we're gonna inflate this again. I think that looks good and there's going to be a ton of vertices on here. Okay, I'm actually going to clear the seams here and then I'm going to select this, select that, uh, mark seams, and then I'll s let me isolate this so I can actually see. And I'm going to select these edges, mark seams. And I did that not to unwrap it, but so when we go to sculpt, which I'm going to do right now, I can initialize these as my face sets. Actually, I'm going to try something. I'm going to add an edge loop, and then I'm going to select both these edge loops, and I'm going to do mark seams, and then let's isolate this again. I'm going to select these UVs. Actually, let's keep the back ones. Uh, clear seams. Let's go back to sculpt, face sets, initialize face sets by UV seams. And that way I can like use these face sets. Ah, that doesn't look good. Okay, new plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna control Z a bunch of stuff. Let's go all the way back to how it was. Cool. Uh, object sculpt. 
face sets, initialize face sets, UV seams. Let's scale this a bit. We're actually going to make the sides here a bit flat. Let's go to edit mode. Pressing 3 to go to face select. I'm turning on proportional editing. And I'm scaling this in just to flatten these sides out. And then I'm going to flatten out the bottom a bit. Then let's go back to sculpt and I'm going to inflate this just a little bit more so I don't have that weird whatever was happening there. Go back here, scale. And I think I think that will work as our cushion. It's still UV properly, right? Yeah. But for this for the seam here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a loop cut, add a loop cut, and then I'm gonna take those, uh, shift D to duplicate, right click on my mouse to bring it back to the exact same location, press P to um, make it its own object, and then I'm going to add a skin modifier. And I'm selecting all of this using Control A. Let's turn off proportional editing. Control A to scale this down. It looks like just the top one has the skin applied. So I'm going to select a vertice on the bottom one and press Mark Root. And that's going to allow it to apply to both of those. So select, press A to select everything. Control A to scale this. And Control A to scale this only really works with a skin modifier. I can't remember why, um, but I'm going to scale this down quite a bit. I'm going to press smooth shading on this modifier and I'm going to add a subdivide surface. When we're texturing this, or when we create the low poly version, we are just going to delete this object and have it just bake onto the mesh uh, using bake normals. So I'm not really worried about how high poly this, this mesh is. But that's good. I'm going to apply those modifiers. I'm going to attach it to our cushion here and I'm going to duplicate Oops, I'm going to use the array modifier to duplicate this mesh quite a bit. Um, I guess let's do like 0.9. Uh, go with that, I guess. That's a bit too close. Oops, 9.6. 9.65. That works, and now I guess I just need to scale it a little bit. And I think that works. Okay, so now we just need to do this like back cushion, which is basically just going to be the same process that we did for this bottom cushion. So let's add a new cube, scale this down. Let's try to get it to match the reference. Scale it in the y axis, bring this down. Um, and then we'll play with it a little bit to get it to match the size of this here. Cool. Um, let's add our loop cuts. Those look like square. Uh, that looks like a rectangle. Let's go to select. Select sharp edges. Press U. Mark seam. A to select everything. U to unwrap. Uh, UV editing. That looks good. Let's go to subdivide. We're going to use simple. Physics, cloth, let's go to layout so that we're in the timeline, go to zero, physics, bring down the gravity, press pressure, press five, I'm going to change the settings here to be cotton, shade smooth, uh, I'm going to bring the bending up just a little bit, bring it up to one, and that looks good, I think. Actually, we'll just inflate it a little bit. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to apply the subdivide here, add another subdivide, and use, uh, instead of using simple, we'll use this one. Uh, add cloth again. Bring this back down to zero. Gravity to zero. Pressure 0.5. See, it looks like there's even like more folds in the cloth here. So I'm trying to add a ton more faces to see if I can get that. I'm actually not really liking how this is looking, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of this. Uh, let's go, just go straight to sculpting. Let's see if uh, face sets, initialize face sets, UV seams. Let's see if I can make this 
into something I like. Let me go to tool. Don't want to use UV seams. I'm just going to scale the whole thing or inflate the whole thing. Uh, how does that look? See, it's pretty square. Like, it's not a very round cushion in the reference. Maybe the whole thing is a bit too long that way. Let's scale. Use face sets. I'm gonna make the sides a bit flatter. Huh? How does that look? It might be usable. Uh, using face select, I'm gonna flatten this out. Let's make sure I have proportional editing on before I do that. I think I need to apply subdivide for a sculpt to work. Alternatively, I could use multi-resolution, which is good for sculpting with subdivision, but I kind of forgot. Oops. How many faces is on there right now? Why not add some more? Subdivide. What I really want is like those folds that are right there. Let's go back to Sculpt. I'm gonna grab the um, Smooth tool. Bring down the strength quite a bit. Make sure that I'm not using face sets. Let's go back to Object Mode. How does that look? That's like too much. Right, we're gonna control Z a bunch of times. That looks better. I should have stopped when I was here. Let's go back to the cloth filter. Uh, make sure face sets is off. I'm gonna scale this whole thing or inflate this whole thing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with this. Let's maybe scale this whole thing down. I'm gonna add. Oops. I don't know what I just did there. I'm going to rotate this and make it how it's supposed to be. Let's add an array. Let's add three of them. Let's do 0 0.96, 0 0.97. That looks good. Let's scale this in the x direction. Try to get this to fit properly. That looks pretty good. Needs, needs to scale a little bit more. Uh, too much space on that side. How about that? That looks good, I think. I think that looks good. Cool. Let's go back to Sculpt. We're going to go back up here to the Draw Sharp tool. Um, actually, let's go back to Object Mode. I need to isolate all of this. Uh, forward slash on the numpad to isolate. Select the object again, Sculpt, Draw Sharp, and I'm going to basically do the same thing I did for this metal pole. It's going to make it look like the cushion is up against that. Uh, I could do it here too, but if I do it here right now, it's going to do it on all of those, which I don't want to do. I think for now that is good. Uh, looking at this, this looks complete. I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to add that edge again. Um, skin. Let's make sure which one of these has the root. The front one has the root. Mark root. Control A to scale this. Make sure smooth shading is on. Subdivide. Uh, the array is not doing great. I'm gonna take that off. Does that look good? Is that necessary? I'm gonna leave it because I mean the mesh isn't gonna be there to begin with. It does look kind of silly. I'm gonna join it with this so it, the array use kind of attaches to the cushion properly on all of them. Uh, I'm gonna apply this array. Yeah, I'm going to apply it. I'm going to apply this. Um, so now these are all their own objects. Let's go to Sculpt and let's change this up a bit. I'm going to add, let's bring up the strength. I'm just going to add small details to all of this. Okay, maybe bring the strength down a bit. And then maybe, oh, that's too much. That should be fine. Oh, didn't mean to do that. My computer is struggling trying to get this to work. Maybe I just use like proportional editing or something. I'm just adding, I'm just grabbing like random vertices to add some more movement in here. I'm gonna do the same thing to this. Actually, let me change my selection tool. So you can imagine people might be sitting on this, so, you know, they might be sitting on this, so cushions might have a bit of a dip. I'm 
And maybe a heavier person was on this one, so it dips a bit more. And now this needs to like follow that. These wrinkles here do not look good to me, so I'm going to go back to Sculpt. I'm going to go to the Smooth tool and smooth this out just a little bit. But yeah, that, that should be our couch. That looks pretty good to me. This couch is uh, about a half million faces, a million triangles, you know, as, as big as a couch should be. It's a bit ridiculous, so let's... I probably didn't need to go that high anyways for the high poly version, but that's okay. Let's um, take this and create a low poly version from this. First, I'm gonna apply all the modifiers. Yeah, I'm gonna apply all the modifiers. Uh, no modifiers, no modifiers. Turn all these together. Delete this empty, because I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna rename this and call this couch. I'm gonna have several couches, so maybe I'll just do couch one. Hi, Polly. Uh, Shifty to duplicate. Uh, right click on the mouse to put in the right same exact spot. Because when you bake normals, you need to make sure that your meshes are in the exact same spot. I'm going to call this one low poly. Now I'm going to press forward slash on the numpad to isolate this object. Go into edit mode and start. Let's get rid of some of these meshes. We do not need any of this. These are the first things that are going to go. And these alone <laughs> is 160,000 faces. So it has X faces. Cool, we already cut this thing down by half. I did not apply the modifier when I made this. So let's select both the high poly and the low poly. And I'm going to select. Actually, no, 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 what am I doing? Select one, select this, I'm going to delete, select that one, press P, make it its own thing. Uh, U, mark seam, let's unwrap this, and then let's bring this out like that. I'm going to try to eyeball it. I know I had used the same modifier with the same settings to get this to match, but I screwed that up, so it doesn't matter. I guess I need to add the bevel modifier on this as well. Bevel, what did it do, like 0.02 or something, or 0.01? We'll go with that. Now let's add this. I'm going to duplicate it, and we're going to join one to the low poly version. I'm going to hide that and join this one to the high poly version. Cool, let's hide the high poly version and go back to doing what we were doing. All right, so I'm going to show you how I go about making a low poly version for my meshes. I feel like some people might advise against doing it the way that I do it. But basically, I select a bunch of loop cuts and then I press X, dissolve. And a lot of times, I'm just eyeballing everything. So what I like to do is I'll do, what is it, Control-Alt, um, Control-Alt, and you get like a loop, the edge loop thing here. And then I like to Hold control, let's deselect all of these edges. Um, and then I eyeball, I select, I'm selecting the edges I'm not, that, that are going to continue to stay. So everything, th these are, I'm gonna eventually select loop cuts from this. And the edges that are left are gonna be what makes up the low poly version. Now, the reason why I say that some people may advise not doing it this way is because I'm eyeballing where these uh, loop cuts are gonna be it can result in some wacky looking meshes, but I think it it gets the job done so and it's I think the fastest way to do it without like actually like re Recreating these meshes or anything. So first I'm gonna try to get one in the center That looks like it's the center and then I'm gonna do the center on this side and the center on this side and the center between both of these and one thing you want to make sure is that you don't ever have any of your seams selected because then um, if you have a seam selected, then when you go to dissolve your edge loops, it's going to dissolve or it's going to get rid of one of your seams, which is going to mess up your UV map. And I don't want to mess up one of my UV maps. So I'm going to select, select that, select this, 
can select that one. Oop, I accidentally deselected two. All right, so you can see that I got rid of these on one side because th this is going to edge loop all the way around, so I only need to select it on one side. So then I go up here, I go to select, and then I go to select loops, edge loops, then I press X, dissolve edges, and now ba we're basically there, and now I'm just going to select the edge loops on here. And now this is our this is this will be my low poly version of this cushion. So let's hide that because that's completed. Because this is repetitive, I'm just gonna speed through this, but basically I'm just selecting all the edges that I want to get rid of and dissolving them. I do this for each mesh, and there's lots of ways to create the low poly version of your models. This is just the way that I do it. I think this is a quick and easy, simple way to do it. You could also create a, like a, like a bring in a cube, add a bunch of vertices on there and use something like the shrink wrap modifier. That's a good way to do it also. But basically you just need a low poly version of your models on top of the high poly version. So they need to be in the exact same location. So when you bake that information, it gets baked properly onto the low poly version. Okay, so this is the low poly version. It looks kind of wacky, but that's okay. As long as it's pretty close, I'm gonna add a weighted normal on this. Let's go back to the high poly one. Let's shade smooth, add auto smooth, add a weighted normal. All right, I'm gonna select both. So we went from like a million triangles to around 4,000. That's pretty good. Uh, I want to select both of these. And I'm actually going to kind of separate some of these meshes, so hopefully we'll get a better bake. Uh, yeah, hopefully if I do this, we'll get a better bake in Substance Painter. But I mean, the modeling portion is basically done. We need to go to UV editing. Let's isolate this. And we need to um, we need to UV this out. And luckily, because at the beginning, as we were going, we were unwrapping it. This should all be set and ready to go. Yeah, like everything is UV out. I'm gonna press N. I have a plugin here called Text Tools. I believe this is a free plugin, um, and this will help you do some some things with your. Oh, I screwed up down here. I must have gotten rid of a seam somewhere. Oh, I might have unwrapped it when it was still mirrored, so I have to unwrap this again, but that's okay. It shouldn't really cause us any issues. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna use a free tool here called UV, uh, or called Text Tools. And in Text Tools, I can add a checkered map. I'm gonna do 2048 by 2048. And then this will let me see kind of how everything is scaling on the mesh, and then I can try to make make everything kind of uniform. So this needs to be scaled up a bit to match uh, how this is scaled. Uh, that might be a bit too much. That's pretty close. This needs to get scaled up. And then these, oh, this needs to get unwrapped again. That does not look right. I should be able to unwrap this again, or maybe I can just unwrap this part. See, because I had the bevel modifier on there, it beveled my seam. So it looks a bit bad. So I need to I need to fix that. I'm gonna try to make sure to only get what I need here. That is a separate object. So let's mark that, oops, control Z, mark that. Let's unwrap this. I'm gonna try to scale this checkerboard to match the metal here. That Like this doesn't need to specifically match with, oh, I gotta do up here too. It doesn't need to specifically match with the sofa because it's gonna be a different texture, but I will go ahead and try to match it and scale it properly. Let's clear that seam. And I need to select these edges. Mark seams. Let's see, did I, did I get it right? 
And let's unwrap this. I'm going to do the same thing and try to scale this to match. It's pretty close. Awesome. I'm going to scale this down because this isn't going to have a lot of details on it and I like the rest of it. So what you're going to want to do now is take all these... I'm going to get rid of that material. So you're going to want to take all these, all this unwrapped information and move it into this little box. Now you could do this manually, which by default you would have to, but I have a plugin here called EV Packmaster. This I believe is not a free um, plugin. This is something that's paid. I think it's like $15 if I remember correctly. I'll try to find it in a uh, link in the description if you want it. Uh, this just helps you pack your UVs. So you basically you just scale it how you want to scale it and you press pack and it tries to and it keeps everything uniform and packs it into the box as tightly as possible so oops I have to make sure I press A to select everything press pack and it's now all in there and I can there's like settings in here like how, how thick of the margins that I want but I think that's good and I think that we are now ready to bring it into substance and texture it so let's uh this is high poly so you can see I have the high poly version selected I'm gonna press export fbx I have a substance folder here I'm gonna select the mesh only and I'm going to call this sofa one high poly export and blender is loading trying to export this one mesh uh, I, you know, one thing I did not check is my back faces. I should make sure that this is all set. Um, so I'm, I'm just using the face orientation tool in the, what's this called, the overlays to double check my face orientation. And everything looks good. If it's blue, it should be good. Let's select the low poly version, file export FPX, uh, low poly export okay now let's open substance I'm not going to walk through how to use substance so if you're a beginner or if you've never used substance before this probably is not going to help you I'm just gonna like move forward texture my couch but if you are getting into 3d modeling I highly recommend you have substance it, I use it to texture everything it is not free I think I I think I paid twenty dollars a month for it and it's owned by Adobe now it's a great tool though we are going to need a new, I'm going to do 4K, but I'm probably going to export it out at 2K. Let's select the mesh VRChat world. Um, so for low poly, press OK. So this is the actual mesh that we are texturing. And now I need to bake my maps. I'm going to unselect ID because I don't need that. Ambient occlusion, ignore back, back faces always. I want the, outs, the output size of all my maps to be 4K, and I'm going to select my high poly mesh uh, to bake. So it's going to use this mesh to bake all my informations for normals and everything onto this mesh, which is why it's important that they are in the exact same location. So let's press bake, and just using the default settings, other than the like two things that I changed, let's see how this bake comes out. For the most part, it's looking pretty good. I need to change some settings. So the settings that I mainly focus on when I'm baking uh, information in meshes um, is this frontal distance and rear distance. So this basically tells the program how far front or back um, the computer should go to collect whatever information is there. So if you had like a hole in your mesh, and but the low poly version didn't have a hole you would want your rear distance to be further to collect all that information i think my frontal distance is way too high so i'm going to do like 0.03 and i could probably turn this down too to like 0.05 let's see how that looks um so now we're getting issues here to affect this mesh a little bit more and I think something that will help us let's select both of these let's go to edit mode let's uh, press 2 for edge select I'm gonna select both of these go to mesh normals flip because that was inverted for some reason um, I'm gonna select this whole thing here and I'm gonna bring this down so just separate it a bit so that I can get a cleaner bake this is kind of like just a cheat for baking <laughs> because you should be able to get the settings to match properly but I'm just gonna separate them oops it's 
file export fbx this is the high poly version so save it to that and because this is such a it is such high poly it's gonna load my blender and almost make it crash okay low poly file export fbx low poly save and let's change these meshes. So edit, project configuration, select the new low poly mesh, select, go to bake, uh, add, select the new high poly mesh, and let's bake this again, let's see what happens. Nice. We're still getting some issues down there. Uh, this all looks good. How's this looking? That looks good too. Let's change the settings just a little bit to see if we can get this bottom part a bit, a bit nicer. Let's bring the bring that up just a little bit. Uh, it looks like we're gonna have some issues right here, maybe. Oh no, that looks that looks okay. I think that looks good. I think this is this will work. All right, cool. Let's make sure we save uh, sofa one. I think this world is gonna have a lot of sofas, so I'm just naming this one so far one to begin with sometimes when i'm working in substance and i bake normals what i'll like to do is i'll add the normal map that i had generated and put it on the layer just to make those normals a bit more prominent and now we can go ahead and texture this so if you remember what our references look like i'm actually going to bring this up so that i can actually see it so it will be off screen, you won't be able to see it, but I can see it, and that's what's important. Let's start with the metallic stuff. So we'll do gold. There is a gold, there are gold pre-made materials in here, so let's see what that looks like. Let's add a mask. Let's put it on just that. Um, oh, is this from the bake? Oh no, they're just in weird spots on the, okay, I see. This is not qu quite as smooth as I wish it would be. I'm gonna just not use that. Okay, let's make our own gold material. Uh, let's bring that there, that looks good. And then we are going to bring something that's a bit rougher, maybe a bit darker. I'm gonna add some like lines to it, directional. Add black mask, add fill, direction, this one will work. And I'm gonna, probably gonna have to, these are like really small on here. And I made it really small because I assumed that, are these all pointing in the right direction? I assumed that I was just gonna use like a plain color for it, oops. Which I such essentially am. Let's just bring this down a little bit. That that should be good enough for for that. All right. Let's do. Is this this material might be like a leather, or maybe it, maybe it's not leather. We'll do fabric. This will be the base color for the fabric. It's it's just a it's like a warm white. I should just probably just do white. You need to make sure that the roughness is all the way up. It is a fabric. So let's duplicate that. We're going to do like the fabric threads here. We are going to pick something a bit darker. Kind of just very slightly going to the, uh, the warm tones. We're going to bring the height up just a little bit. And we are going to find... I have a bunch of maps here that I could possibly use. I think this one is default with substance. So let's... Let's try this. Fill. Then let's bring up the tiling. This is a bit extreme. That looks a bit better. See, in the picture, it, it doesn't really look like you can see much of the threads, but you know what I should try? Instead of the threads, maybe like just noise would look better. Ooh, it kind of does. Let's scale this up a bit. Ooh, I kind of like that more. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna use the threads. I'm just gonna use the noise. All right, now I wanna add some like shadows. So this will be like some ambient occlusion, like manual ambient occlusion. That's 
bring this down a bit. Um, and then we're gonna find a mask here that, that looks good. Something like this maybe. Ooh, that might be too much. Let's go into the editor. So every one of these masks has like a mask editor. You can like change it a bit. What does it look like without? With. I'm gonna just make this darker just for the purpose of being able to see what it's doing. It's mainly just doing stuff on here. It's not really doing too much on the smaller cushions. Maybe that's not the mask I want. Uh, let's try this and maybe I'll be able to invert it. Yep, there it is. And then I can change the level. Yeah, let's bring this back up. I'm actually gonna add a blur to it too. So add filter, filter, blur. Right now I want I want a bit more detail on here. Let's do fabric. Let's see what comes up. Um, maybe something like this. Let's duplicate this again. I'm gonna bring the roughness down just a little bit. Bring this slightly into the orange tone. Add black fill, fill, cloth folds. Let's scale this. And these are all just like super subtle changes, but I feel like this stuff makes it look a bit better. And then finally, let's add uh, just a bit of detail with a grunge map. Fill, maybe just like some clouds or something. Let's I'm using like pitch white again just to bring the color, make the color a bit brighter. Even though, like I made it darker with the shadow, now I'm like bringing it back up a little bit. I feel like I feel like this will work. Let's just go with this. We're gonna call this Sofa One, and we are going to file export this out. Uh, this is gonna be a VR chat world, so it's gonna be in Unity, and I'm gonna export it at, with the Unity Metallic Standard. So that this, so that that means this texture will work with the Unity Standard Shader which is what I basically use. Let's change the save location. Make sure it's in the right folder. Sofa one, select that. And I don't need it to be 4K, so we're gonna export it out at 2K. Export that, so let's, let's go into the low poly and let's put this all back together. Go to shading, make sure we can see the textures. Okay, we're gonna call this sofa one. We need to bring in texture, image, open, texture, sofa, albedo, bring that over. And now we need to do metallic smoothness. And so the way this works is we, the roughness information is in the alpha, but we need for in Blender, we need to invert it to get it properly, bring it over to roughness. And then we need to separate RGB values from the color because the metallic information is in the red channel. We bring that over to metallic. Now let's bring in a normal map node. Duplicate this, open up our normal, attach it, change that to linear, and this is this is the couch. Uh, that looks pretty good. I feel like I could add a bit more detail. I'm gonna add one more thing. So I'm gonna duplicate the shadow. And I'm gonna make it just a bit darker, and instead of using uh, this mask, I'm going to add a different mask, I'm going to type in edge here. I'm just going to make this way darker so I can see what's going on. Yeah, I think that will make things a bit nicer. And instead of using the sharp filter here, I'm going to add another blur. Alright, let's export this out again. And go back to shading. And all we really need to change is the albedo. And it looks identical. <laughs> well, I guess you can kind of see it there. Regardless, I think it's done. I'm calling it. And if I want to make any changes later, I can always come back and change it. Um, save. Go back to Blender. And this is, this is my couch for this project. It's going to go right over here. There's going to be a fireplace there. There's going to be even more couches around. And it's going to be epic. 
Let's delete this. I don't need a million triangles right there for no reason. And I'm going to delete these because I don't need that anymore. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I feel like I was just rambling about what I was doing, but that's how you build a couch, I guess. And I think that's all I got for you. Bye.